There is a practice whereby advertisers will partner with news outlets to create an advertisement that is ultimately meant to blend in with actual news content. Now, this is called native advertising. This isn't where journalistic autonomy is compromised by an advertiser. Journalism isn't even involved. You may have seen something like this New York Times article, moving forward, a path to net zero emissions by 2070. But this isn't a Times article, it's an ad. Yes, it says paid post, and yes, it has this Shell logo in the corner, but it's hosted by the New York Times, and the editorial staff wouldn't just print energy industry propaganda, right? Except the editorial staff wasn't consulted. This content was paid for by Shell and created by T Brand Studio, the brand marketing arm of the New York Times. The news and editorial staffs of the New York Times had no role in this post's creation. This is obviously a problem because Clearly, this is supposed to look like a New York Times article, and if it's not meant to trick people into thinking this is an actual Times article, it's at least meant to let people believe this somehow has the backing of the Times, even if it is an advertisement. The New York Times is not the only company that does this, and actually, the one I'm gonna focus on is Vox. Now, one thing Vox is known for is their explainer videos. This strip in Cape Town, South Africa, divides the beachside community of Strand from the township of Nomzamo. They're only a few meters apart, but the people on each side live very different lives. Strand has backyards and driveways. Nomzamo is much more dense. And the people here have fewer basic services. Really well-produced, incredibly popular videos that break down topics in ways that are clear and entertaining. Vox has built a level of trust and expectation with these videos. So let's say you click on a link that brings you to this video hosted by the Vox website. Here's a fresh idea. The dairy industry is committing to carbon neutrality by 2050. This video is produced by the Explainer Studio in partnership with a brand. But a brand deal doesn't mean the video is necessarily trash and Vox has to make money too. It's still a Vox explainer video, because it would make sense to assume that Vox's famous explainer videos are produced by the Explainer Studio, but they are not. The Explainer Studio is part of Vox's brand marketing arm, and they seek to capitalize on this confusion. Your brand, your story, your world, explained in Vox Media's signature format. The Vox logo and Explainer Studio might allow you to assume this is somehow endorsed by Vox, but again, it's not. This advertising content was produced in collaboration between Vox Creative and our sponsor, without involvement from Vox Media editorial staff. Sources are provided for informational and reference purposes only. They are not an endorsement of advertiser or advertiser's products. So for the person who was reassured by the Explainer Studio logo, mistakenly assuming that Vox's Explainer Studio produces Vox Explainers, you are about to be misled by industry talking points. Every time a cow belches or poops, it comes with a release of methane, a greenhouse gas. Of course, most human activity releases emissions, but if the cows themselves emit methane, how can dairy farmers move the needle on greenhouse gases? First, it's strange to mention methane and then cite numbers for total greenhouse gases and not for methane, but let's take the 1.3 figure. Dairy accounts for 1.3% of emissions compared to 28% and 27% for transportation and electricity, respectively. Obviously, this is meant to make the 1.3% from dairy seem insignificant, but most emissions would seem insignificant compared to the emissions from all of electricity. They could also have said the dairy industry is responsible for almost as much greenhouse gas as landfills, or as all of aviation it would be more apt to compare all of animal agriculture, 14.5% according to the UN, to transportation or electricity. Someone acting in a journalistic capacity would not have used the numbers they did. But they're gonna talk about methane emissions and that's good because animal ag makes up 35 to 40% of human caused methane emissions. Ever hear of cow power? That's the conversion of methane into usable energy called biogas. That energy can then supplement electric power for entire communities. And while cow power and cows look different across the country, every dairy farm innovates for sustainable progress. So let's see how dairy farmers get it done. First off, diet. Dairy farmers can feed their cows a diet that reduces methane, resulting in belches with less methane from the start. All right, so the claim is that a cow's diet can affect their methane production. Oil seed, almond hulls, spent grain, 
This is not in practice extensively at the commercial level, but it's true that linseed, for example, has been shown to reduce methane production. Almond hulls, not so much. One study of 32 cows showed that not only did the diet have no impact on enteric methane emissions, enteric emissions being from cows' burps, which is the largest contributor to their methane emissions, more than methane produced from manure. It had no effect on enteric emissions and actually lowered milk production. And the spent grain is also nothing to celebrate. Uh, spent grain is the grain left over after the beer making process. Cows have been eating this stuff for a long time. There is potential for a reduction in methane emissions, but a study from the Flemish Institute for Agricultural Fisheries and Food Research found that with spent grain alone added to cattle feed, there's no reduction of methane, only when it's used in combination with rapeseed meal, a residue of the conversion of rapeseed for the oil industry, can we measure less methane. Why that is, we're not yet able to say. So the prospect of meaningful reduction in methane from diet is not great. Many dairy farmers have installed biodigesters to generate energy from manure. As it breaks down cow waste, biogas is generated and captured. That can be used for electricity, heat, compressed natural gas, and even vehicle fuel. Their manure actually can give you additional power to manage the, 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 the whole farm. So the rest is also a, a fertilizer that you use your crops to, to grow. Biodigesters. Biodigesters take waste and turn it into biogas. The first thing to note is that biogas does have CO2 output, the CO2 being preferable to methane because methane is 25 times stronger than CO2. But biodigesters are certainly preferable to permanently storing waste in the common manure lagoons, which have been known to devastate the health of surrounding communities. Uh, people in proximity have consistently higher rates of asthma, for example, among other things. In this case, the manure pools are just used temporarily until the waste is pumped into the biodigester. The biodigester feeds into a generator that powers the farm. But when there's too much biogas for the generator to handle, the excess is just burned off, so the biodigester doesn't explode. But more than that, biodigesters are expensive, costing anywhere from $400,000 to $5 million, and since there are no regulations mandating biodigesters, Various incentives have been floated to encourage farms to install them. U.S. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack said that you find significant reluctance to regulation on the farm, but great acceptance of incentives. Really? They're not so into regulations. Well, he would know because he's a former dairy lobbyist, but you know, they don't really seem to be that into incentives so far either because there are only 317 operational biodigesters in the U.S. And that's for all farms, not just dairy farms, of which there are 40,000. So what they're calling cow power is just fantasy, because not only are there so few biodigesters that proposing them as a near-term solution is ridiculous. Studies show that even if manure digesters were installed on every single dairy farm across the country and worked at optimal efficiency, this would still fall short of the industry's goal of reducing its total greenhouse gas emissions by 25%. Now one last thing, there's this series of figures flashed on the screen, and I, I want to highlight the one about water. In 2017, the dairy industry used 30% less water than it did 10 years prior. Looks like the dairy industry is really moving in the right direction, but that's not a thing. Here's a five gallon jug. A cow uses 30 gallons of water a day, so that's six jugs. And a dairy farm with a thousand cows is pretty average, so that's 30,000 gallons of water. And that's for one farm for one day. There are about 2,000 dairy farms with 1,000 cows. And that's how much water is used every day by just those dairy farms. So it's not hard to imagine how the beef and dairy industry account for almost a quarter of U.S. water consumption. But the issue with water isn't just its consumption. Those giant lagoons that waste is stored in, they often leak and rupture. But the waste is also intentionally sprayed onto farm fields as a method of disposal. Now, this waste is a fertilizer and has nutrients that plants need to grow, such as phosphorus and nitrogen, which are macronutrients for plants. But it has more than plants can absorb, so the excess nutrients from fertilizer leach into surface and groundwater, causing algal blooms and nitrate contamination, impacting drinking water. Heavy metals, pathogens, pharmaceutical residues can all leach into water supplies from this animal waste. This ad says that the dairy industry can be part of the solution. This is impossible. They can contribute less to the problem, 
they can lower their enteric methane emissions possibly, they can find better solutions for dealing with the massive amounts of waste. North Carolina alone produces 10 billion gallons of animal waste a year. But the only way to be part of the solution really is to shut down or produce less dairy. Unfortunately, the dairy industry is very strong. One of their lobbyists is the Secretary of Agriculture. In a time when it is now known that animal agriculture is such a big, but sometimes overlooked, contributor to the climate crisis, when so much misinformation about agriculture sustainability permeates our understanding, a news organization promoting such specious industry propaganda should just not be tolerated. If Fox News let the NRA produce a native advertising segment about how getting more people guns would reduce school shootings, and there were a little disclaimer that said, this is an ad. Fox News' editorial staff had no part in the production of this segment. Even though such a segment wouldn't actually be that far away from the general position of Fox News, places like CNN would talk about how Fox News has fully released any ethical pretense. And that's exactly what the New York Times and Vox and the Washington Post all do. These companies leverage the trust people have in them to peddle deceptive information about polluters. They help some of the foremost contributors to the climate crisis lie about being part of the solution. Proponents of native advertising will point out that it has a higher viewer retention rate, but that's because it looks like actual news, which is why it has no ethical basis. And if an organization can't survive without it, then that organization shouldn't.